This document is not worth coming here. Justice manipulated for political ends. I have the impression that a certain number of countries tend to make ECOWAS their own and exclude others. What is true should be told. He has said the truth and he needs to be supported. No member, none, no MP, no member of the office said anything. The time has come for a certain number of debates. Nobody. No, yesterday, none came. Today, none is here. It's unacceptable. It too has to be told. So please, bureaucracy, extend the view, not the view, you know, uh, the sentiment, not the, well, not the sentiment, the fact of the part, you know, what the parents are agreed upon that anyone coming here should, the head of that agency should, 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 should be here. So please, this is it. Please communicate to them. Is any of you? In this video, the representatives of the ECOWAS countries express their frustration with the absence of some leaders of the ECOWAS Commission and discuss various issues affecting the region. The document that was presented to us is a guided tour of the direction. It's not a working document. It's as if you see, we tell you, here's Guy Maris. His name is Guy Maris. He is one meter tall. He weighs 100 kilograms. We just guided this office. It's called that. This office is called like that. There are six directions. There are 20 divisions. That's what this document is. It was not worth coming here. We could have sent it to us. There is no number. It does not tell us what is planned for the year. This document could not send this. It's my second criticism, and that's why I say I understand why we came at 12 p.m., because it doesn't take much time. He's a senator in Nigeria. He is such an age. He wore a boo, a very beautiful boo-boo. That's what fits here, but nothing else. I would like to ask specific questions. Is it true the president of the commission said here finally last week that it has dispersed money for the air conditioning of the headquarters of the ECOWAS parliament and that day no member, none, no MP, no member of the office said anything. And he said that he did it a long time ago. Where did the money go? If they don't tell us where the money went, if we don't sort out where the money went, if we are not discussing here about spending the money, but the president of the commission will say, but you people of parliament are making fun of me. But between you, you are not even serious. Where did this money go? Air conditioning of our headquarters. Is it true that there are overcharges on the fuel for the generator at the seat of the Parliament of the ECOWAS? Is it true that there are overcharges on tickets? Plane tickets of ECOWAS deputies and others. I want specific answers so that we are clear on what is going on. We cannot be the poorest people in the world, and if it's true we overcharge for fuel, we overcharge for plane tickets, and so on. That there are people who live on the backs of the community and community levies, Mr. President. I know, yes, everyone loves money, but Mr. President, if we finish a meeting on Thursday, we don't have to pay on Friday or Saturday. I'm ashamed to say it. We finish meetings on Tuesday, we are paid Wednesday, we are paid Thursday, we get paid Friday. It's our fault, parliamentarians, but administratively a part of responsibility. This can't continue. I would be ashamed to look the people of Niger in the eyes, Senegalese in the eyes, the Beninese people in the eyes, and tell them I am paid for days that I do not work. It has to stop, and that exists. During the presentation of our country report, our brother, 
Because I guess in this room we are among brothers and sisters of the ECOWAS. So our brother, the Honorable of Senegal Guy Marcus, mentioned cases of death during the demonstrations that Guinea recorded, accusing the Guinean authorities of remaining insensitive to these cases of death. I would like to tell my brother, the Honorable, that the authorities of the transition, since their arrival, have been committed to respecting the fundamental freedoms of human rights. That is why investigations were open to locate responsibilities and punish the perpetrators of these acts. There is even a gendarme who was sentenced to 10 years in prison because of the death of a young person who was shot dead during a demonstration. So I think, Mr. President, that the transit authorities deserve to be congratulated for these actions. We should not transform this parliament into a battlefield for making indictments against the states of our different countries. I think we are here to promote sub-regional integration. And I would like everyone in this room to know that the Republic of Guinea has decided to remain a member of the ECOWAS, despite the sanctions which weighed on our country. Despite the fact that certain countries had decided in transition to withdraw, Guinea stayed because Guinea wants to respect its commitments to the ECOWAS. There were many actions that were taken, and I would like to recall here by the transitional authorities within the framework of respect for human rights in my country. Mr. President, I would like to start with a few small observations before tackling the three points that I would like to address. First of all, of the presence of the deputies in plenary, you just mentioned the question at the beginning. And I think that we must go in the direction you wanted. But it is we ourselves who have revised our internal regulations to define a quorum noted by the registration lists and not by appeal. Whereas usually it is by appeal and therefore effective presence before the start of our activities. Perhaps what we did is not entirely the right way. We will have to review our regulations internally. There are also Articles 65 and 102 of our internal regulations that we must review to redefine our relations with the ECOWAS Commission in terms of presence, in terms of document transmission. And the term for defining a certain number of deadlines to be able to have better harmonization of our relations. I think that there are provisions that we must review in our internal regulations to resolve these questions. That said, Mr. President, the commissioners by commissioner, let's say the speaker later, mentioned problems of awareness raising of the various ECOWAS institutions on the activities carried out by the ECOWAS. Since he is the commissioner in charge of questions of finance within the ECOWAS, in the budget of the ECOWAS parliament previously, small funds were planned for national delegations to carry out awareness activities each in their country. It was a miserable sum of barely $10,000 per year. But for two or three years or four years, this is no longer given, and for any answer. We are told that it is from the very mission that it was decided that these small subsidies must no longer be given. These small endowments to allow deputies in their country to carry out awareness raising activities around what the ECOWAS is doing. What exactly would we like to play our part? 
But is it bureaucratic rules that prevent this? Or are there valid reasons so that this no longer happens? I would like you to give us answers to the question. The first point concerns the recruitment of staff. You presented us with a state in terms of budget, devoted, for example, to personnel, therefore the civil servants of the ECOWAS. I will now call on the uh, representatives of the commissioner to uh, respond to the uh, comments and interventions that were put forward by various parliamentarians of this esteemed parliament. The contract was signed, the service provider delivered the equipment, and they are in FAS for installation and testing. I think, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, deputies, in your next session in December, you will have a functional system at the level of the ECOWAS Parliament. Regarding the issues of overcharging, I would like to thank again the Honourable Member of the ECOWAS Parliament on this issue, but above all, I would like to reassure that at the level of ECOWAS institutions, there is first of all a control mechanism. You have the Office of the Auditor General. You have audits which are carried out on a regular basis to ensure that what we put in place or what we pay corresponds exactly to the reality of the market. I do not want to go on a question of overbilling, even in relation to the question linked to fuel from the headquarters of the ECOWAS. Mr. President, are the workers of the different ECOWAS institutions have the right to union? The right to union is not an obligation. You are free to belong to a union or not. It's true I'm an MP. We can say no, 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 no MPs. It's not their problem to take care of the material interests and morale of workers. Wanting happiness for our people begins first with the people who are there who are there and who without them we would not do they have the right to organize. Are their union rights protected? If they refuse it is their business, but at least we recognize the right to organize here. Uh, on page 65 of the report, I end there I finished. Mr. President, I have finished page 65 of the report. These are the human resources, human resources management challenge insufficient workforce need to upgrade of. Service FA budget, etc. All these points, it requires answers. We have no idea here of the number of civil servants employed by the ECOWAS today. All institutions combined, how many are these civil servants of the ECOWAS? What is the distribution by country of these ECOWAS officials? You spoke to us about insufficient staff. Insufficiency is always in relation to an existing, but we are not even aware of the existing. And you tell us there are 478 vacancies and this year 262 are open. It's a bit esoteric. Can you give more details? In any case, I will take the case of Benini, tried to see the different director positions. I know there is one good hundred if not at ECOWAS. I note that there is not a single director of Beninese nationality now within the administration of the ECOWAS. On what basis then are the distributions made? On what basis are recruitments made? I have the impression that a certain number of countries tend to make ECOWAS their own and exclude others. What is happening? We need transparency because it is your police station or your department, I was going to say, who takes care of these recruitment issues. Tell us what the rules are. What explains this imbalance between the states? Mr. President, I would like to end with the question of infrastructure construction. 
since today it's an interactive session, normally on the programs of your department. I saw, I read, I followed in your presentation that a humanitarian depot was planned in Bamako, in Mali, and that the work was stopped during the year 2024. It seems nothing has been done. I would like to know if it is because Mali announced its departure from the ECOWAS, which is not yet noted, that we have stopped carrying out this project. Or is there another reason only political in relation to this Senate? Because I think that we must be extremely careful. Let's respect our own rules to better position ourselves. The time has come for a certain number of debates. Thank you. There have been many acts, as I recalled, in particular the reopening of land borders which were closed with certain neighboring countries. There was the lifting of internal barriers to ensure the safety of citizens. There were civil society activists, political leaders who were in prison, who were released by the authorities. Today, there is the trial of September 28, which is underway in our country where more than 157 Guineans have been killed. The authorities of the transition, these are acts that must be encouraged and saluted. Mr. President, demonstrations are happening in all countries. Demonstrations are happening in all countries, and Senegal is no exception. Mr. President, I recall that before the presidential election in Senegal, there were many demonstrations which were violently repressed. There is even talk of more than 60 deaths. The Senegalese opposition was persecuted. Justice manipulated for political ends. There were some defenders of human rights, journalists who have been imprisoned. Even the current president was imprisoned before he became president of the republic. So Mr. Guy was to denounce all these acts. He had many things, and even the National Assembly of Senegal passed an amnesty law against people who are the alleged authors of these seizures. Mr. L is a member of this parliament. Why did he not denounce his actions? Therefore, we are against the remarks which were made in this room, and which today undermine the authorities of our transitions and recognize the achievements of democracy. I would like, Mr. President, to remind you of the questions that were asked in relation to the return to constitutional order. Mr. President, the authorities of my country are doing their part better for a smooth return to constitutional order. For the moment, we conform to the current dynamic program that was found with the ECOWAS, and the authorities have sufficiently shown their desire to respect their commitment and proof, I remind him, we decided to remain a member of ECOWAS. Ladies and gentlemen, it should be noted that we have observed throughout the years 2021, 2022, and 2023 a significant fluctuation in the level of prices on the local market, which means that costs have soared compared to our needs. You find yourself in a situation where the cost of fuel has increased by 50 or even 100 percent, which means that this is immediately reflected in the various invoices we are sent. I would like to reassure you that there is a control mechanism in place a control system both at the external audit level and at the level of the Auditor General's office to ensure that our purchases still correspond to the reality of the local market. In relation to the question of plane tickets, it is a question that has been raised by multiple speakers. I agree with you that there are excessive costs compared to plane tickets, but this arises from different aspects. Firstly, the first problem is the lack of planning. We are behind schedule ordering our plane tickets, and that is a situation that is valid at the level of all institutions. 
When you order a plane ticket two or three days before the start of the meeting, of course, you will be invoiced at full price. That's the first aspect. The second aspect is the coordination office. We have engaged at the commission level, for example, negotiations with airlines on the basis of the volume of transactions that we bring. We are still an institution with a significant number of staff trips taking place, and we try to negotiate with some of the airlines to reduce these costs. This is something that we must do at the level of all institutions in a shared manner to coordinate and be able to negotiate prices that are truly competitive compared to the reality of the market. But this also requires very good planning. We carried out a steady trip some time ago at the African Development Bank, and we realized that a mechanism was put in place precisely because they also had these outstanding questions. For any mission, you must make your request two weeks or at least before this mission to allow us to resolve all these logistical questions and to place the necessary order. Do not wait two or three days before making a request, having this request validated, and asking the airlines to establish these plane tickets. When you buy a ticket two or three days before, definitely you will have an extremely expensive price compared to this. In this sense, the management of ECOWAS has established guidelines to encourage or bring all the directions and departments to plan quarterly for their activities. Allowing the administration and the Department of Internal Services to make substantial savings by ordering these plane tickets in advance to see how to reduce these different costs. It is a major concern at the level of all institutions. We are experiencing the same situation, but I agree that there is a significant effort to be made at this level to really reorganize the mechanism and avoid excessive costs. This, of course, will involve discussions with all the agencies and airlines to negotiate on the basis of the volume of transactions that we bring to these airlines. Regarding the question of union rights, we have what we call the representative staff at the level of the commission of all the ECOWAS institutions. Therefore, representatives who are there for the professional staff, but also the local professional staff. To answer your question, we have a system of representation at the level of all ECOWAS institutions. Concerning your comment on page 65 of the report, which concerns human resources, as I said, we have this concern to make substantial savings. Given the scarcity of resources and the difficulties of cash flow that we have, I completely agree with you that sustained efforts must be made to strengthen further. Ensuring that we secure the resources that we have and that these resources can be used in relation to our different programs and projects. The Honorable Samso from Ghana spoke about the absence of mechanisms organized for the reception of honorable deputies at the level of the different meetings organized here in Nigeria. I think we should take good note with our colleagues from the ECOWAS Parliament to try to better organize this aspect in order to truly satisfy and uphold the important status of honorable deputies compared to what is done elsewhere. Regarding the award of contracts, I would like to remind you that we are governed by the procurement code of ECOWAS institutions. This procurement code defines procurement thresholds which remain precise and clear. Even in the case of a national call for tender, for example, organized here in Nigeria, all nationals of the community are authorized to participate in this call for tenders. Therefore, the ECOWAS procurement code clearly indicates the provisions in terms of advertising and the thresholds required for advertisements at the local, regional, and international levels. We use our website where we publish all procurement opportunities. 
Depending on the size of the market in the member states, we request publications in newspapers in the member states. I would like to reassure you that at the level of the procurement portfolio, we have many companies which are not necessarily based here in Nigeria, which is the headquarters of our institution, and that is based on the provisions provided in the markets code of ECOWAS institutions. Regarding the question of plane tickets, once again, I emphasize that it requires coordination, better reorganization of the system, and negotiation based on transaction volume. It is important that we can pool all efforts at the level of all institutions to really manage this issue of plane tickets, which today is a concern for all deputies, but also for the management of ECOWAS. Regarding the budget, a comment was also made on the question of the implementation of the approved budget. I will leave the opportunity for my colleague from the budget director to kindly answer this question. On the question of visibility, we are in complete agreement. We need to communicate more, and I think that the management of ECOWAS is reviewing this aspect because we have a management of communication that is today developing a much more aggressive communication policy so that we can show exactly what we are doing on the ground. I totally agree also on the question to further involve parliamentarians and all stakeholders at the level of ECOWAS so that they can get more involved and better sell the image of the institution. I think that there are not too many observations to be made on this precise point since we share these same concerns. The Honorable Bachir Dua spoke about the question of the implementation rate of the budget. I will once again leave this question to my colleague from the budget management at the headquarters level of ECOWAS. I would like to inform that we are at 40% physical execution. Two weeks ago, we carried out a technical reception since they have completed the 11th floor. I would also like to remind you that this seat is a donation from the People's Republic of China. We are working with the federal authorities of Nigeria to try to move forward on the state of physical execution. We are at 40%, and the projections that we have with our Chinese partners are that in January or February, we should be available. To complete this project, which is an important project, I take the opportunity to also answer the question, where are we with the Parliament of ECOWAS? I had mentioned in my presentation that the site is supposed to host the ECOWAS Parliament, the Court of Justice, and the ECOWAS Commission. I would like to inform this August Assembly that, with the support of the Government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we are working to complete the procurement process so that the business can really start quickly. The Court of Justice aspect, and especially the Parliament aspect of ECOWAS, are progressing. Therefore, this is the information that I can give at this moment. I believe that others more authorized will be able to provide more information on the question of vacancies at the conference division level and the significant needs in human resources. My colleague from Human Resources Management will address this point and make the necessary comments. We take careful note of the observations made by the Honorable Madam Cohn from the Republic of Guinea. On the question of visibility, we are in complete agreement, and as I said, sustained efforts are planned at the level of ECOWAS institutions to communicate more about the institution itself and the different programs and projects carried out. 
The Honorable Sheriff commented on the state of implementation of the budget, and our colleague will talk about the state of physical and financial execution of the different projects. It is important, and I think that we take good note for our next interactions. We will also aim to provide much more information on these audit questions. If you like the videos that I produce on this channel, take a little time to like and subscribe to the channel.